Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm really excited about today's guests, uh, Steve Burnett, and the theme of today's topic is talking about burning the boats. Steve is uh, he's going to share his business background and his story. It's, it's truly inspiring. He's going to give some tidbits, something to inspire you, and I'm really happy to welcome to the show. So, Steve, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that, and uh, glad to be here. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you on and um, thank you for your time. And so for the audience, you know, we connected through Podmatch and tell people about your story and how you got started. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll begin with the end in mind if we can. Hello, Stephen Covey. And uh, (laughs) basically, this is kind of like how we accidentally built a value ladder for our coaching business that now earns over $300,000 a year while working 20 hours a week. And it all began, as you mentioned uh, at the start of the show here, we burned the ships, meaning we had a very successful local painting company and we did really well and uh, word was getting around and others were asking, hey, how'd you do this? And because we had did it through the Great Recession. And so we sold uh, what my CPA referred to as the cash cow. And uh, so we sold and we launched. And when I started, I was, going, I was able to go ahead and close, uh, sell, excuse me, uh, sign up five clients. Well, those five clients only brought in $4,500 in revenue. Uh, we were living in a nice pool home, a block and a half from the beach in Venice, Florida, and our break even was $10,000. And on top of that, we went ahead and rented a fancy office right in the middle of downtown, remodeled it completely and decked it out in all brand new furniture. And moreover, we hired some agencies to help us. Cause I'm like, how do you, I figured out how to sign, how to build a local business, but how do you reach out and connect with people uh, across the country to build trust and rapport and to convince them to sign up and to convince them that they can trust you to, to help them that, that I wasn't sure. <laughs> so I started hiring agencies and marketing agencies and well, I have a nice list of all the wrong ones to hire. <laughs> and long story short, we blew through a lot of money. And, and my wife would say, you know, it's kind of like jumping off the cliff with a box. And as we're going down, <laughs> blowing through all our capital, it was like trying to open up the box and the airplane parts were inside. And we had to open up the box and put the plane together as we're going down. And that's what it felt like emotionally. <laughs> so I had uh, five clients when we launched again. It was like $4,500 and our break even was 10000 I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to get there as fast as possible uh, before we blow through everything. Also, the business I sold, um, I sold it on seller uh, finance, meaning um, they paid me a down payment, but I allowed them to make me payments over the next five years. So I didn't get a big chunk from them. So then every month too, we're kind of waiting for that payment for our business that we sold as well uh, while we're trying not to blow through all of our capital. <laughs> With five clients, I went, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? All right, well, I've got to do something and I've blown a lot of money with the wrong agency, so I didn't trust any of them anymore. And so I started uh, creating some videos. I was inspired by uh, Gary V, the Gary V show or whatever. So I said, well, I'm going to do the Ask Steve B show. And so I did. I'd go into the office on Saturdays, spend about five, six hours just to figure out how to record one 10-minute video for YouTube. And so I started doing that with the Ask Steve B Show, and I'd put them out and I'd say, hey, post your comments or your questions below, and I'll ask yours. And and I was the first one in my industry to do this. Nobody else was uh, was was helping out or giving the information or the content that I was giving. Well, uh, while that was rolling, starting to get branding out and, 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 and word, word of mouth of what was going on, and I was helping out in Facebook groups too as much as I could. Uh, I started, well, started, I was researching digital marketing as much as I could, online marketing, digital marketing, because that was all brand new to me. Well, I come across a uh, one company that provided digital marketing courses, and it was like $38 a month. I was like, wait a minute, recurring membership, $38 a month. And I went in there and it was great stuff. I was, I was learning a lot, but I thought, we can do this, you know, because I had processes for uh, how we built the painting company. And whether they're marketing processes, sales, uh, recruiting, leadership. And uh, so we sat down, my wife and I did, for like the month of May and wrote out, I think it was just eight courses, eight procedures. And we figured out how to put together uh, an online uh, course site or, you know, an LMS, learning management system. We figured out how to put PayPal on and we figured out how to get rid of PayPal because that was not the way to go. Uh, And then, you know, 
hook it up to Stripe, and and then uh, and then we learned how to do some uh, landing pages, and then uh, we figured out some lead magnets, and sure enough, we eventually started getting these uh, course level. I think we charged thirty seven dollars a month, and they started rolling in. We'd offer a dollar trial and thirty seven a month. And then I attached it to a members only Facebook group. Now, I reference Facebook because that's where my target market was at the time. Uh, you know, today it's Facebook and Instagram for them. But for you and your audience, it's, you know, wherever your target market hangs is what I would recommend. Uh, so we created a Facebook members only group. And it, as they come rolling in, we got about 20, 30 members. And that times 37 was cool, but we still were a ways from breaking even. And so one of my clients who had been with me, uh, one of the first clients, he said, you know, why don't you uh, offer a group coaching group? I said, that's a great idea. And so what I did was I had used a model that um, that I had used to build the painting business uh, mastermind model. And it was called the Monday 20 then. And so I used that to create a group coaching for my clients. And we called them mastermind groups. And uh, sure enough, first month we launched it, we filled it up. Now, when I say filled it up, I think it was like six members at the time because it was brand new and I was scared to death. I was like, how do we do this? Are they going to receive value? Are they going to hate me? You know, uh, I was working through all that self doubt and those fears, but I launched it, I think, for like six members and filled it up. I was like, whoa, okay, that was great. And then, uh, you know, I'm like, well, let's try it again. So the next month we launched another one. And sure enough, Six more people raised their hand and they jumped in. So we did this uh, five months in a row, filled up five mastermind groups. And in fact, like the fifth one, uh, one of my clients who had success coming through my system, he went ahead and hosted that one. So then there we are with some mastermind groups and then first client, you know, coming on as a coach. And uh, sure enough, by uh, month 10, we finally hit break even. So here's here's why I accidentally discovered and that was the value ladder and, and it looks like this. It's you know free content. And so wherever your target market is, you know, for us it's um podcasting is huge, right? Now, not this type of podcast. I've got another one, but it is for them, for the painting contractors, right? This one here is like how I built the coaching business. But for them, uh, it's for painting contractors, and then there's also YouTube videos and blog articles. And so we just create keep creating that content marketing. And then that content marketing, they uh, download lead magnets. After they download a lead magnet, they get a dollar trial to our online courses, which is uh, it's $49 a month now. And then once they get in there, they get in the Facebook groups, and then they hear the conversations, and they hear you know about the group coaching or the mastermind groups, and then they raise their hand, and they, they join some of those, and those are anywhere between $147 and $247, depending on uh, the size of their business. And then we open those up, too. So we have... Uh, about 20 members in, in each mastermind group now. And then from there, many of them, after about two, three months, they'll raise their hand or you reach out to them for one-to-one -one coaching. And so as long as we cre keep excuse me, creating that content at the top, the podcast, the videos, the short videos, and the blog articles, we keep that flywheel going. They just keep coming in and a certain percentage continues to ascend uh, up the levels. And that's how we accidentally built this value ladder. And today, uh, we're very fortunate to you know, be clearing well over 300,000 a year. And I work about 20 hours a week and 15 to 18 of those are meetings. And um, the other few hours are sometimes a podcast or recording some videos. A really interesting story. And uh, I love how you um, built the business from the ground up using uh, digital courses and um, and funnel. So one yeah, so I love this. And then, um, you know, you and me, we were talking about this and, you know, we'll talk about the actual um, value ladders and retaining members and community. But uh, one thing is talking about is uh, is because uh, a lot of audience out there, <clears throat> they're still in their W-2, nine to five mm -hmm. jobs and they want to go all in. And then you have this idea, Napoleon Hill talks about it, is burning the ships and yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah, it was scary. So <laughs> I like afterwards, I heard uh, Elon, I, I think, explain the emotional feeling the best I could. He says, it's like staring into the abyss while chewing glass. And it was. It was and I hate to scare everybody off. Uh, but it's, but again, it's just feelings, you know. And so fortunately, I had some mentors who uh, talked me through it. 
But afterwards, on the other side, like Todd Smith was one. He came back. He's the author of Little Things Matter. He says, Steve, he says, I've talked to a lot of guys. I've mentored a lot of guys. You're the first one who actually did it. I'm like, oh, I'm glad you didn't tell me when I was going for it, you know. But um, I believe that when you launch, when you go for it, as long as you're determined to succeed, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. It was intense. It was stressful. We were blowing through capital. And if I didn't figure this out, um, if I gave up trying to figure it out, we would have to move. I'd have to pick up my family and move to another market and start a painting company all over again. I didn't want to do that. So I uh, just, just, just kept getting after it. And um, I'd say, too, another key before launching would be to make sure you have your spouse's support. Uh, I wouldn't have succeeded if it weren't for April cheering me on. Every day, tell me she believes in me. I've got it because self doubt kicks in. Everything kicks in, you know. Especially as you're blowing through everything, you're 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 watching your pride wash away as you're as you know as you're trying to figure this out. So you need your spouse's support. Also, surround yourself uh, with a group of other entrepreneurs uh, who are launching and taking off who can encourage you as well. And so that's why you know mastermind groups. I believe in them through and through. Uh, today, I'm in mastermind groups, and today I I have business coaches. Uh, because I've got bigger goals and want to take it to the next level. So I would say, make sure you have your spouse's support. Don't give up. Okay. Just be determined. You're going to figure this out. If you keep figuring it out, it's not about having money. It's about being resourceful. It's about being resourceful. Keep asking, how can I, right? So Robert Kiyosaki would say, uh, you know, in his book, no C-bombs, right? If you say can't, uh, mental laziness, that's telling your brain to stop working on the problem. Just keep asking, how can I, how can I, you know, like Brian Tracy would, would teach us. And then uh, surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you. Stay away from the crabs in a bucket. You'll succeed. Yeah, I love that. And there is, there's really this great book is, uh, you know, once you burn all bridges and there's no turning back, it's like there's this book, Gabriel, the universe has your back. And, uh, you know, you start to attract, activate the law of attraction. And, um, mm. yeah, I can remember that, you know, uh, in 2008, September, Lehman collapsed and I turned, my, turned in my keys, badge and pager, you know, set out. And I, I can remember leaving the hospital, you know, those, that palpitation, those butterflies in your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that'll yeah. like, that'll motivate you to like do yeah. something. You know? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, it will. It does. Yeah. It can serve, you know, it's motivation. It can serve uh, to you to, to give up or to get after it, you know. Yeah. And so courage is acting in the face of fear. So even though you fear it, push forward, push forward. Yeah. And uh, it's worth it. Yeah. And I love this idea where you said, um, cause, uh, you idea of, like surrounding yourself and for the longest time, you know, I surrounded myself with people I wanted to emulate and people yeah. that did what I wanted to do. And, and it's interesting because the naysayers, they are naysayers because they haven't done what they say can't be done. Mm -hmm. So that's, so you have to kind of plug yourself into the right yeah. avenues, but, um, uh, Indeed. You know, my favorite is when somebody says, I tried that once. It doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing works the first time. Yeah, exactly. You've got to commit to like 10 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chances are you thought about doing that once. You probably didn't even try it once, you know, let yeah. alone 10 times. Nothing <laughs> works the first time. It's all right. Go on, commit to 10 times. Yeah, exactly. So I love this. And then, uh, so the other, other thing is, so um, sounds like you started this successful business and then you turned it into content. And now it's like, you're more and now it's more of um now your education and community so what's the value ladders that you unknowingly put together i'm just really interested yeah the value the, the value ladders are <laughs> uh first there's the free content right so i'll start at the bottom there's the free content that we just keep publishing and then you know from there the lead magnets right so those are free and so what you're doing is you're developing trust at each each point now a key component of this is make sure you give a ton of value at each point make sure you over deliver Right. So if somebody's training you for their email, that lead magnet, make sure it's awesome. You know, one of ours that was very successful, 11 interview questions. And they're key because they reveal the character of the person you're interviewing. Half the time that person doesn't even realize uh, they're, they're revealing their character, you know, or there's the pre-qualifying process or, you know, or how to, how to price. Right. Those are some of our best uh, lead magnets. And so we give away a ton of value there. And then, you know, from there, it's a dollar trial. Not only is a dollar trial, but if you don't like it, I mean, cancel, we'll give you a dollar back. That's no problem. So we try to make each step as easy as possible. But what you're doing is you're building step, you're building trust with these strangers at each step of value, right? So then they get in the courses and they see all the courses, but then we also add them to the Facebook group, the members only Facebook group. And the value here is they come, well, pardon me. So a key point is they, they sign up for the courses, but they stay for the community. They, they sign up for the courses, but they stay for the community. 
here are some key components for creating a community that they stay in. And one is a positive and forward-looking culture. I've canceled memberships of anybody who is critical, condemning, complaining, arrogant. I'll reach out to them once, ask them politely, please don't. But if they do it two uh, times or sometimes three, I'll let them go if it's been a while and they forget, you know, um, I cancel them. I don't care how wonderful they are, how successful they are. I protect the culture mm-hmm. of the community. And so anybody in the community, they have no problem asking any question they need. They will not be criticized and they know that they're going to get help. Right. Yeah. So that's the key for the community. And then from there, you help them and you serve them. You answer the questions as if they're your best clients. And then the next value ladder is the group coaching. That's the next step of trust. You invite them in. You tell them you think they'd be great for them. They'd be an asset for it. Um, in fact, they don't like it, you know, you return their money. Another key component to, to our program is that there are no contracts at every level, whether it's group coaching or one-to-one coaching, there are no contracts. It's month to month. I tell them that we own the uh, value they feel like they're receiving. And if the value is not there, they don't have to continue. In fact, if if after the first month, it's not fantastic, I'll return the money. So now there's no risk to check it out. And that's why we have, uh, you know, ascension of the value ladder. Yeah. I love that. And, um, it's all about adding value and you reference Gary V. Uh, so what 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 are keys for retaining members, you know, mm-hmm. gaining community engagement, getting them to upgrade? Um, I'm just it's, yeah. it's really yeah, this culture now they're saying culture as an asset, which is what you're describing. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it was it was culture was important to me even back when you know I was building the painting business. Uh retention, some keys for retention would be um keep the community engaging somehow. And even in the beginning, I would reach out to a couple of clients and say, hey, I'm going to post this. Would you just comment for me? And I wasn't telling them what to comment or how to comment. But what I wanted was I needed uh, some I needed some algorithm juice because while they're commenting on my one post in our members only Facebook group, they've got thousands of other Facebook posts to compete against. Right. So it helps if you get a couple of people to comment genuinely on your post to help get engagement going and get the algorithm going. That's really important. Big wins on Friday is still by far the favorite. Everybody likes to share their big wins at the end of the week. And then I try to come up with unique conversation or questions uh, to post, you know, on just throughout the day and random days. And so you try to engage um, as much as you can. Anytime somebody asks a question, always comment on it and answer them as if they're your best client. Give them the best advice you can. You don't wait till they pay for one-on-one coaching. You, you uh, Something Bob Berg taught me was that you give away all the content. They'll call you or sign up for one-to-one for contact. I love that. And uh, and it's just talking about this idea of um, you know raving fans and just um, keeping them engaged. Um, you know, final kind of final question as we mm-hmm. come to the conclusion is um, – what to do when you're maxed out with coaching clients after you've raised your rates? Um, I'm curious mm. about that. Okay. That's a really good question. <laughs> so, cause uh, you know, the market only allows so much. I say, well, if you're full, raise your rates. Well, okay. But you know, at some point the economics don't work anymore. You can't charge a million dollars an hour or whatever, you know, for somebody who's built a million dollar company. Uh-huh. So you raise your rates to a healthy level, whatever it can be. Then at that point, what you do is you start, um, you start, coaching your clients, training your clients on how to coach, and then you work out a rev share with them. You start building out your coaching team. Really fascinating discussion. How can people contact you, follow you, check out your social media, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that, Chris. Uh, my email is steve at dot com. Uh, also, if somebody's interested in more information about building a coaching company, I would say this is somebody who has a successful practice or business already, uh, but wants has a heart to serve others. They're welcome to go ahead and schedule a strategy call with me. We'll leave the link with you if you want to put that in the notes. And then uh, I hang out mostly on Facebook. Uh, mm-hmm. Send me an email. I can send you the link. I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, I-, I check Instagram once a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much of a distraction for me. But my target market is mostly on Facebook. So I'm there. But again, they can e- best way is email me, Steve, at DYB. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love that. Hang out where your community is. You know, if it's Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever and uh serve value give first thanks so much for coming out to the podcast he's also a podcast host a dyb podcast which will all these mm-hmm. links and resources will be in the show notes and with that thanks so much for coming out to the podcast thank you for having me chris appreciate it